Hey, everybody, and welcome on into this fireside chat here as part of our Freight Waves 3PL Summit. Excited to have you guys sticking with us and to be in studio with us for this fireside chat. And joining us local to Chattanooga, we've got AJ Cheek from Repower, Chief of Staff over there. And you guys are not too far away, so we're glad that you made it here into our studio for today's fireside chat. So let's dig right into it because the way that Repower works, I think is fascinating. And you guys are continuing to innovate in the space, not just for your carrier, for your shipper, but also really for your broker to give us a little bit of breakdown about Repower, where you guys started and where you're existing kind of right now. Yeah, sure. Um, so Repower is a platform that allows transportation and logistics companies to manage and share trailers. Um, and that applies to everybody um, in the space. So carriers use us, can use the platform, shippers use the platform, leasing companies, uh, and then of course brokerages use the platform. Um, and really uh, hasn't changed, adoption has grown with brokers, but we've been, uh, they've been in our customer profile um, really since day one. And so to start, I guess a little intro to that, uh, what day one looked like, um, it was 2021, um, Spencer and Patrick co-founded the company. I joined them shortly thereafter. Uh, it was in the heat of COVID, you know, the tightest capacity market we had ever seen. Um, and there was no available trailer capacity um, to be had except for the existing capacity within fleets, whether they were private fleets or for hire carriers. Um, you know, on a good day, uh, these operations or even their best day are operating at, you know, 90, 95% utilization. So there was always, we thought, five to 10% of that capacity available for uh, to spread across the market and create an, a more efficient supply chain as a whole. We found that to be true. We found that that carriers were more willing to make that equipment available um, if it made sense for their network. Um, and then we people had initially told us they would be. Um, so we tapped into that and we've been doing that ever since. Um, and some of the people who can benefit the most from that uh, are folks who don't have, don't traditionally have access to trailers. And so uh, that can be a small carrier or a small fleet um, that deals with uh, credit constraints or just capital constraints, but it also very much can be a freight brokerage company that faces um, lots of challenges when it comes to acquiring trailers. Um, and we help across the board with that um, in a way that, um, you know, allows them to be, to take on sort of a different persona, compete for different customer freight than they traditionally can. So we've obviously seen a really, really big flip in the market from when you guys started to where we're at now. And that's been kind of an underlying theme for a lot of our fireside chats in this event. But I will say that this downturn has been really particularly unkind to brokers, especially if you got into the space maybe around that 2020, 2021 time, you were used to just making money hand over fist, having to fight for this capacity, but end up ending up making a really good amount of margin on the opposite side of it. Now we're here and people are still wondering, can I survive this, right? How how many more resources do I need to make it survivable? And is Repower one of those resources that continues to be kind of that extra step in almost like a broker's toolbox to do that? Absolutely. Um, so I think what you hear in that is you got certain, you know, uncertain times ahead. You certainly were still in the middle. Um, if you look back at February uh, in, the, in the middle of a really downtime, particularly for, for brokers. And even as like positive light is on the horizon, that's going to be a tough time for brokerage, you know, uh, as you, Craig talks about often, you see it, you know, um, published here almost on you know, a weekly basis, if not more frequently, you know, what that crunch between contract freight and spot freight is going to do for brokers. And so I think positive times are ahead, um, but even coming out of it's going to be challenging. And we think that repower and access to trailers certainly can help brokers withstand that. And by, and what I mean by that is, um, you know, having access to uh, trailers can allow you to tap into more customer freight, tap into contract freight, which gives these brokerages staying power. Um, so they're not subject to the market nearly as much as they are if they're only living and dying by, you know, drive-in or reefer or whatever the um, trailer type may be, you know, specific, um, you know, spot loads in that sense. And so, um, Getting the trailer oftentimes is the key that unlocks the ability to have contract freight, have more stability, uh, and then leverage from there, whether they want to turn around and broker out to a single carrier, uh, to power only, and you have a lot more flexibility on that side of the house as you're you know, acquiring the, the power for it. But regardless, the trailer can unlock um, stability and staying power uh, that 
you know, otherwise would not be available to a brokerage. It's a bit of a learning curve, right, to figure out how to adopt this type of tool and use it as like an alternative solution, especially if you're looking at traditional brokerage, right? You're not necessarily used to having this as an option. Is that something that you guys are finding is maybe difficult to get into with some of these brokerages is get them to change that mindset and say, hey, okay, no, we have this alternative solution for you. Let's get you to learn to use it. Yeah, absolutely. It's absolutely a challenge and we see it, uh, you know, the reception to it. Uh, kind of across the board. You know, you've got certain folks that say, not for me, um, you know, we're good in the transactional model. We don't have any desire to step into an asset-based or asset management model at all. Um, you've got the other spectrum of folks that are very trailer-centric, you know, uh, want to go from a brokerage model to asset light or asset medium business models even. Um, and so we see the kind of the full gamut in that. Um, but certainly there are challenges. There are operational challenges when, you know, it's a different sort of thought process than just, you know, win a load, book a load, deliver a load, kind of wipe your hands clean of it. Um, when you have an asset that also is kind of trailing, uh, pun intended, uh, behind that whole entire uh, equation. Um, but we can help folks with that. And the insurance piece, managing trailer interchanges for the first time, at least in volume, they're all challenges. Okay. Uh, but things that we love to to work through, we've got a diverse skill set uh, across the team. Um, but a lot of it all, you know, almost everybody uh, can, can point in some way back to logistics. And then we also have a, a spread of insurance and legal backgrounds. And so, you know, we're well-versed, well-suited to help our customers think through the challenges from operational to insurance of what it's like to manage assets um, really for the first time and how that can work in a, a traditionally uh, transactional business. So when we think about the life cycle of a trailer and the life cycle of that asset, what does it typically look like for something that is in the repower platform? Are you looking at assets that have been maybe forgotten about in some fleets and are just looking at a second lease on life? Or are you guys looking at people who are creating these assets specifically for this trailer sharing use? Uh, we see the full spectrum um, again. And what's really neat is we get to see all of it uh, really is the short answer. And so um, there is certainly a marketplace component to what we do that serves really well for underutilized uh, equipment that there's just not a use case for it anywhere within that carrier's company or, or, or uh, network. And uh, we kind of serve as a release valve for that. And we get to see, you know, folks uh, that's kind of the most underutilized uh, or equipment or equipment doesn't have a good answer for. And in that marketplace, we certainly, especially during COVID, saw people you know, buying assets, allocating assets specifically for the marketplace and for rentals. But what's cooler, I think, is you know through the platform and the asset management tools and some of the insights we can give fleets back on how they're using their trailers, we actually get visibility into you know their entire fleets and can provide a lot of insight and help uh, into their trailers that are being used and interchanged on a daily basis. Um, so we see the full spectrum um, of a fleet and you know can provide value across the full spectrum. So keeping on that lifestyle theme, but switching it gears to the life cycle of the startup, which I think is interesting to talk about as well. And Patrick and Spencer were here. They could definitely talk a little bit more about this, right? But you guys have had some continued, very, very successful growth even through this down cycle. And as you mentioned, getting that adoption of people to understand there's an alternative solution is really the way that you guys have seen that growth. What does the future look like for Repower now coming out of the down cycle? And as you guys continue to, I would almost say, lead the way on trailers of, as a service of a model. Well, thank you for that. Um, the future is bright uh, for us. We, you know, we think that we're well positioned um, to sort of ride the uptick uh, in our in our market. You know, we definitely are subject to freight cycles, um, just like everybody else in our industry. Um, you know, thankfully we've been able to, as you point out, withstand kind of the down um, cycle. Whereas, you know, we've certainly seen our average order values go down as the price of a trailer goes down, um, that sort of thing. But it, from a growth standpoint, we've maintained growth through that entire um, down cycle. Uh, which we're excited about. And we've done that um, primarily through having kind of sound unit economics. Um, you know, so we fortunately, as as someone kind of creating the market that we live in, you know, we, we don't have to compete over pricing in that sense. It's not a race to the bottom service that some other, um, you know, companies unfortunately find themselves competing in. And uh, we've just been disciplined in, in that process. And particularly through last year, it's helped us grow. Uh, we've had a great 
team. Um, so yeah, Spencer and Patrick get to see it from day one. Um, but you know, through that whole process, we've just continued to kind of bring into the team really strong people um, that have helped us grow. You know, to this point, are continuing to do that. And so because of that, you know, we are really well situated. The product has gotten to a point where it can add a lot of value, particularly outside the marketplace. And so we can add value across the entire fleet. And because of that, we think it's a great time to say, hey, you know, as people are kind of riding out the upswing in this market, it's a great time, um, you know, for us to capitalize on that and start to add real, you know, even greater value to customers. So we're super excited about um, what 2024 has to offer, especially the back end of 2024. Um, and yeah, it's overall excited. Yeah, it is. I mean, and it, it, it happens, all, it's sort of twofold, you know, in some ways we are a leader and we are doing something that no one else is doing. But what also adds a ton of value is that actually fleets have been doing interchanges informally uh, forever. So that allowed us to have adoption. The market understands the concept of, of sharing equipment, of maintaining equipment really well. Um, so, you know, in that there was, it allowed us to have great adoption and people kind of understood, you know, what we were asking them to do to a degree. It was a little bit different. Um, but at the same time, you know, your entry point, you know, didn't start from zero there. Um, and at the same time, you know, fleets of all sizes and all shapes, you know, oftentimes will have their own lease on, lease on programs, owner, oper owner operator programs, that sort of thing. So they're doing these things, um, but a head on competitor. Yeah. We think we kind of stand alone in that space. And, um, and so, yeah, it's been, it's been really fun because that allows us to work with a lot of different people and we don't necessarily have to, um, you know, be mindful of a competitive landscape like that. So to wrap it all up and bring it all back to the brokerage for maybe the broker or the brokerage who is looking to get into this for the first time or making maybe wanting to make that step to using you guys as a platform. What are those three things that are like, yes, this is the right time for you to get in. This is the right, you guys are in the right space for it. Uh, yeah, I don't, I'll try to come with three maybe. Um, but yeah, so it, it, what I would say is uh, it's a great time, particularly this time of year, as you're going through RFPs uh, to say yes, um, to, to no longer allow the trailer to be something that holds a broker back from the overwhelming majority of the RFP that they've worked hard to get from the customer typically. And so, you know, from a timing standpoint, RFP season heading into a new year, uh, particularly as you're looking at kind of the freight market itself, it's a great time to invest in a trailer program uh, because it allows you to tap into contract freight, have some more consistency, and build staying power with a customer by taking a larger chunk, uh, really of their of their routing guide. And so, whatever the horizon has going into the year, you're going to have more consistency when you're locked in um, on a contract basis there, and you're tapping into a greater um, size of the routing guide for any customer. And so, I think with the uncertainty ahead, with margin crunch ahead, you know, now is a great time to think about. How can we have consistency, sustainability uh, with our customers? Um, and then we stand ready to help with any of the challenges, whether it be operational, insurance, legal, uh, to figure out how to really implement a good program uh, for your brokerage. And so, yeah, no better time like now. There you go. Well, AJ, we thank you guys so much for coming all the way. Not even all the way. It's like eight blocks up here to the Freightwave studio to chat with us about this. Sure. If people want to reach out to you guys at Repower, learn a little bit more, maybe get into the program, where can they go to do that? Sure. Repower.com. Um, that's Repower without the second E. Uh, they can reach out to us at info at Repower.com. Fill a form out. Uh, you know, email AJ at Repower.com. All the above works. Um, and if you're by the freight waves office, you know, like you said, Haley, we're on chestnut street. So yeah. you can also pop in. We're happy to have you. It's eight blocks. So we'll see you guys over there. All right. Thank you for coming up here again. Thank you guys all for sticking with us through our 3PL summit here today. Plenty more content coming up throughout the rest of the day. So stay tuned. And if you miss any of our sessions, you can find them on demand on our YouTube channel after the event.